Well, as far as the breast is concerned, um, I think we're going to be able to now put women in a standard clinical scanner. We're going to be able to look at look for any deregulation so that those women that are actually at high risk, we're going to be able to say you're at stage one or stage two or stage three of deregulation and they're going to be able to make a decision as to whether they would have a double prophylactic mastectomy before a tumour arrives. Um, I think in the case of the brain, uh, we're going to be in a position to make a diagnosis for the frontline defenders, the, the soldiers, um, the policemen, the immigration officers that undergo damage or stress. But interestingly, I think it's also going to help us understand the developing adolescent brain more. Um, we've managed to assign some chemicals in the brain that Caltech has linked directly to memory and learning. So we really now are in a position to look at the human brain and to see whether these, um, these chemical markers of memory, learning, um, executive function are damaged. Um, and in the case of the adolescents, how they develop. And you know, should our children be playing contact sport? And if they do, how long after they've had a concussion should they be allowed back on the football field or on the ice skating rink? And up until now, we haven't had a means of doing that. And I don't think that's too far away. Yeah, I think we are. I mean, the technology was developed here. It was really, uh, some of our work we did while we were in the Harvard system, um, but it's back here. And in fact, it is the US and the Australian departments of defense that have asked us uh, to undertake these programs with the soldiers. And they have all sorts of questions that they would like to try and, and, and get, get answers to. So it's a new discipline. Interestingly, we developed the technology uh, really for different types of questions, initially in the cancer area, but we were, we were actually asked to try and work out an objective test for chronic pain by Michael Cousins at the University of Sydney, North Shore Hospital. And once we found that we could in fact do that, then we found the, national, the American uh, National Football League knocked on our door and said, well, can you do it for repetitive head injury? And when we worked out we could do that, then we actually had the Department of Defense saying, well, what about PTSD, what about blast injury? Um, those sorts of questions. We have constantly been given clinical questions and asked if we are able to develop a technology to address those questions. And I'm a firm believer that uh, it, it really is important to take a question that is clinically relevant or has a practical relevance and then work on that. And you know, the sorts of information that government wants should not be ignored. So the, the BRCA program I described to you, we, we now have a health economist doing the number crunching. But it looks as though the savings to the economy are gonna be in the billions, and I mean two digit billions, okay? So if, you, if we want government to support what we're doing, we have to provide them with information in the form that they understand and can see good reason for providing the funds to undertake the research and development.